let's say metal is put across the media. So now we have two transistors connected together. And that slide that I showed showed the result looking down on this of such a work of art and commercial effort, industry, to manufacture a particular design of an electric circuit. It's an enormously complicated electric circuit that can make calculations all by itself. But the design, the thing that determines the pattern, is the original arrangement of light. And I just wanted to show you how it is made. But that's only 2,000 times. And we want to now talk about 20,000 times, small. And uh, that is new and different. It hasn't been made yet because we can't do it because light can only go down 2,000 times. So we have to do it some other way if we're ever going to do it. I spoke about writing at 20,000 times reduced. And what I want to show you now is writing 20,000 times reduced. This is a non-commercial process. This is a process that is being worked out in the frontiers of this business, trying to see how small we can make things and how small we can write things. And there's a particular example. There's a laboratory at Cornell, uh, that makes these, that's doing this particular research, micro something or other laboratory, right? Very small, look, making great things are very small. And I have a friend, Tom Von Sant, who's an artist who loves art and science and commerce and everything else together. He's a real man of the present era and not one artist who sneers at science and doesn't understand the world he's in. He loves the world he's in and he loves art. And so he is asked then if he they would make a drawing for him. He designed the paint, the drawing, and he made a drawing, which is the smallest drawing ever made by anybody in the world. Okay? And in the next slide, I want to show you the smallest drawing in the world. Okay? This is supposed to be a drawing of an eye. It's an artistic work. Okay? What it really is was a salt crystal and a beam that was moved around to make hole to dig away the salt so as to make this image. And then the image is looked at in an electron microscope. This thing, compared to the normal human eye, is 100,000 times reduced. That's more than I've been talking about before. 100,000 times smaller than the human eye is the actual drawing. And of course, this is a magnification back again so you can see it. <laughs> The artist, of course, has the right quality. All art has this quality of, of a kind of, you don't really care, it's sort of, you know, it's very beautiful. But this was caused by a truck that came by, shaking the beam, you know, shaking the apparatus, because even the tiniest vibration at this scale is a big movement, and that produced that, which makes a very beautiful picture. To get some idea of the scale of this, the, cross, the distance across this thing is approximately 100 atoms which is uh, as small as anything has been made yet. The, uh, the uh, Tom had a definite idea. He wanted 100,000 times less than an eye for a reason that I'll just, you'll understand in a moment. And they were the people there were disappointed because they can make the dot about half as big and the lines about half as thick and the whole drawing about half size. But we insisted, he and insi Tom insisted that this be the size. Because he had another drawing of an eye, which I would like to show you, the same artist, had previously made another drawing of an eye, which is in the next slide. And that, of course, is the true kind of art with different kinds of patches at different colors and so on, which represents modern art, right? That's a beautiful picture of an eye. I really, you know, if you made an eye, you'd make a circle and a line, but they make it with such beautiful colors and everything else. To see more about this picture, I want to show it at a different scale which is in the next slide, because he has included here the eyebrows of the eye and something rings under the eye, you see, and there's the eye. To get still a better idea of the true scale of the canvas for this picture, we look at the next slide. This is the city of Los Angeles, and there is the eye. And this is the largest picture in the world that has ever been drawn. Okay. It is 100,000 times larger than a normal eye. Now I would like to tell you a little bit about how the picture was made. How did that 
Hey, this, of course, is a picture from the Landstart satellite. This drawing's so big, you can't just look at it. You've got to go up there 600 miles into the sky and look down with the Landsat satellite to see it. Is it possible to go backwards with the slides to two slides back from this? Yes, thank you. What was actually done is what happens with the Landsat satellite is this. It has a beam and it looks at the ground, goes back and forth like this as it sails over the ground. And the beam goes back and forth and it's computed. The light that comes at any moment into the cell, moment after moment, is computed. And an image, a spot, a little square is made for that direction at that moment. There are three different colors information that's taken in and it's added together to get the color. Each one of these is called a pixel because it's all calculated from the thing and you don't see that when you look at the full picture. Just like when you look at a complete picture in a magazine, you know it's made of a lot tiny dots. Well, the dots, they're too small to see in a normal picture, but here they are big enough to see. Now each one of these covers about an acre. And we would like to know how Tom Van Sant had the energy to cover all these acres with white over a distance of two and a half kilometers. This drawing, this picture corresponds to a drawing two and a half kilometers wide. And this is the way he did it. He set up a mirror at different stations. There are 24 mirrors in this picture. And each mirror is set somewhere and the angle exactly calculated because the, 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 pro, the timing for the Landsat was well known, was given to him by the Landsat people, and he calculated the angle to set a mirror. So that at the moment that the beam went to look at that acre, the angle was just right that the sun went right up into the, into the camera and you know saturated the camera. It was a flash of white so that that particular pixel looked like the whole thing was white. It's just as though, you see, you don't have to have a whole acre. So he had 24 uh, mirrors set up in the desert, each 